Good afternoon, just gone 4.30, so I'll just give a, a quick wrap uh, of the day's events and maybe even some, some commentaries. We've just seen a bit of downside in, in equities here. Uh, obviously, big moves followed last night, and obviously I'm sure you've all listened to, to the briefing and sort of gone over the reasons why. I mean, it really did kick off uh, over the last, well, from Monday last week, you can see here where my, my mouse is, and then Friday we had a, a decent sell-off, and then, and then yesterday is where it all... All, all sort of uh, happen. Um, if we just actually go to yesterday before we go into what happened today, it might be worth, you know, sticking around a bit. You can see it was, it was seven o'clock where it really we had a new low and it all all kept coming down from there. So this is this is by no means over for the day's trading at all. Um, in terms of where we've been at today, we have well we've made obviously a, a, an early new low. In the Asian session, but since then have rallied, and this is the S&P we're looking at here. We we pushed higher to to above the pivot, uh, and now we just found a bit of resistance coming back down. If we have a look at the Dow, I'm going to put it also on a 15-minute chart just to give it a bit more uh, relevance to the previous S&P chart. Similar above the pivot and then back down. The Nasdaq, you got it above the pivot, and here we have come back down. In terms of, of where we go from here. I think it's definitely one to, to worth sort of waiting uh, before the dust really settles. If I actually just get a, a trading ladder in into the picture here, um, let me just place in current page, and this is the well, that's the Nasdaq moving there. This is the the Dow Jones. I'm just going to leave that there for a while and just just talk through. You can see how quickly it's moving. Usually for the Dow, there's a lot more people in the market. It's very illiquid. It's going up and down incredibly quickly the market it's not taking too much to move the markets perfect like this um, you know we're, we're doing uh, 100 points a minute some in some cases so definitely uh, 100 ticks a minute so definitely one to, to be careful of any trade looking to get into in terms of a, a more medium longer term trade is this the buy the dip opportunity You'd have to be brave, uh, to be honest. I mean, if, if someone asked me right now if I'd rather be long or short, and I had to give an answer, I would rather be long. But am I looking to get into the market right now? Not with any real um, confirmation uh, at the moment. I'm just going to move that uh, ladder just to the side there, and you know, you can keep having a look at that, just how quickly that is moving. So we have pushed higher. I think for, for these trades going forward, you know, you, you, if you are looking for any consistent uh, down direction, you should get a nice sort of trend line on on from those lows, not just in the Nasdaq, but the Dow Jones as well. You know, it could be that these these bigger breaks on the larger time frames are, are what really could perhaps open the door to further selling. 7 p.m. and it was the same on Friday actually. Friday around 7, I was I was still in the office, and uh, what had been previously. Uh, you know, a good area where the buy the dippers would come in. It just had no reaction. So, seven o'clock seems to be an interesting sort of time, and I, I would recommend staying uh, in the market at least, uh, keeping an eye on it for that sort of time. And I know I surely will be uh, tonight. Uh, in, in case we do push higher, you know, it's definitely worth having. Obviously, that that marked up that high, but the resistance levels that we sort of made on pullbacks yesterday, albeit on very, very thin um, liquidity. Personally, though, I, I do think it, it's better to sort of, you know, uh, relax before looking to get in. You know, we had um, comments, Mnuchin algorithmic trading definitely had an impact on market moves on Monday. Uh, you know, the Trump infrastructure comments, you know, things uh, trying to sort of calm the, the storm, if you like, uh, really was a powerful move to, to the downside. If we also have a look over at gold, which is actually come down to, and I'm just going to make this chart a bit bigger, you can see a really strong area of support from the middle to end of January there. In what you felt, and it was similar to that reaction you saw post the US election where everyone initially, if Trump was going to win, would think, yep, yeah, gold new highs, it's going to go. And, and with this sell-off, Perhaps you'd expect uh, gold to a quarter bid, but not to be the case. I mean, we have found support on that low, but if we go to what has happened today for gold, it has been drifting down lower since hitting that R1 around uh, 11 o'clock, and you know could well be that we we get a, a further sell-off there. 
the T notes chart, another interesting one to keep an eye on. Obviously, that really caught a bid last night, breaking higher for the first sort of update it's had in, in quite some time of any significance. Um, you know, a lot of the the talk of this this sell off has been down to the to the rising yields, lower price. So one to to keep an eye on as well going into. Uh, that sort of seven o'clock time period. In terms of technical points with this market, you've got a nice trend respected to the downside there. Uh, a break of that could open the door to a bit more. Let me just see if there's any other levels to be aware of. Yeah, you can see how important that point in the market is around here. So definitely one to, to be aware of there. In terms of the dollar strengthened this morning, but we've just seen a bit of a pullback actually. Uh, currently you can see the euro here just coming off its worst levels it's lower down the time frame you can see from uh, around 11 o'clock 11 30 we broke down uh, for the strongest move of the day but it does look like we're looking to, to pair those losses and that very much has been the the sort of scenario really of the last couple of weeks it did seem last monday like the the return of a bit of dollar strength was coming but then the markets got really choppy i'd, I'd say currency markets at the moment are are very uh, very hard to, to sort of predict longer term where they're going the pound similar broke through that low found support and that we've already pretty much done the the entire move to the downside dollar yen so looking at this the other way around you know dollar strength to the upside yen strength to the downside if you want to go as simple as that starting to pair those losses as well so interesting one there for the dollar which really did sort of strengthen this morning but we're looking to to pair that completely uh, oil, I mean, it, it, for a market like oil, you know, you're forgiven for completely forgetting it, it sort of exists um, today. Uh, it's been quite choppy down and, and, and lower, perhaps helped now by this, this weaker dollar. Obviously, you've got the data, the API data out this evening before the DOE tomorrow. Um, but, you know, focus, rightly so, should be elsewhere. Just before we come back to equities, to having a, a look at to what they're doing. Bitcoin, which has definitely caught the eye of... of of people over the last few weeks with this big sell-off you've had down as low as sort of just below six thousand and then already up to seven and a half and now back to seven thousand so bitcoin regaining that uh, that sort of crazy volatility uh, if you'd like i know equities tried its best to to live up to that uh, last night and we're just monitor this uh well we got here we've got the dow jones uh, marked up here let's see if we can get another trend line on here because obviously these markets are moving incredibly quickly but that's quite nicely respected there let me just edit that for any of those that are looking to get in it's and you can see the ladder on the left hand side trading at the moment on here with um with risk limits it's going to be hard you want to be giving yourself a bit more room lower the size that you're trading it's it's very uh tricky market here um so in the summary of it up to now for 45 and you've got to be careful here if you're if you're watching this in a couple of hours it could well be uh, completely different um, we, we, we rallied but very choppy the markets of thin liquidity in terms of predicting whether this is the low that we saw around 3 4 a.m. Uh, I don't want to put my neck on the line but I, I would um, I would say best to wait for, for the dust to settle to, to really before making a a firm decision let's have a look over at the FTSE which bounced quite nicely it did take a big hit yesterday the pivot's been an interesting level all day in, in finding support once we broke through could well be if we you know we see a, a break lower in, in other equity markets the FTSE looks to go the DAX here similar sort of around that pivot being very choppy and you know these are big big uh, ranges for the, for the DAX even you know if we do sort of swing back a bit you can see that has also been on that big seller pivot holding well for now um, but I would definitely recommend sticking around you know for uh, the the sort of US close into what well, the close of, of, of trading uh, today uh, let's have a quick look back then you know you can see how quickly that ladder moving and you know just for those trading the CFD you can see if I put this on to just a one minute chart you know this this candle here we've gone 100 well, it's that 150, you know, 75 ticks in a minute. 
you know, it's, it's almost impossible to, to trade that with any risk management. So I wouldn't necessarily be looking to, to jump in straight away. But definitely, uh, I think the safest trade here could well be if we look to get in near, near those lows again and, and jump on that momentum. Whether we get down there remains to be seen. I would, I would look to have those trend lines from the bottom going up. Um, we'll have a quick look over the, the calendar for tomorrow, but it may well take the, the back backstage um, if these markets continue to, to kick, kick on. Data, really the only one to focus is going to be the oil. Uh, uh, free fair. You've got a couple of speakers. I'm sure uh, you know Jerome Powell's enjoying his, his first couple of days in in the office, and you've got a couple of Fed speakers out there. It could be interesting to hear what they have to say and any more comments uh, on the market. I'll be interested to see if Trump comes out and says anything more as well. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, just to just to finish this this wrap up, if if you have a look here at the the S and P, I'm just going to put this into a weekly chart. Here, I'm just going to move the ladder out of the way. I know it's mesmerising. You know, even if we just look for three down weeks in a row, you've got to go back. You've got to go back. I'm struggling here. You know, beginning middle of 2016, it's it's anything more more than three. You know, you've got three there. One, two, three, four. You know, end of 2014. You know, I'm not expecting uh, this to continue for a long period of time. Is uh, my advice in terms of the safest trade is obviously going to be waiting for that, that dust to settle though. Um, but yeah, any questions obviously get them in the chat um, or or comment uh, send me an uh, email or whatever but if not I'll catch you all in the in the room tomorrow but last thing I'd just to say is I would recommend sticking around uh, last two trading sessions 7pm onwards for the Friday and the Monday it has all uh, started to unfold quite nicely so catch you guys in the morning and hope you have a good rest of the trading day